Just imagine, you are in love with a girl at school who is your childhood friend. One day, when you were determined to reveal your feelings to her, the girl said she was moving out the next day and would never come back. However, during the night, you end up seeing a giant light in the sky. And when you go to investigate, you discover that the girl is not from your world. So, when you see your loved one leaving, you decide to enter the portal and end up going to her world, which is a typical fantasy world. To your surprise, she was about to marry a prince until a demon appeared. So, she changes her mind, and when she kisses you, she decides to marry you, which gives you incredible powers, making you the king of the ring. Now, you need to save this world while you gather new wives, one more beautiful than the other. Hi, my name is Kai and in today's recap we will watch Tales of Wedding Rings. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, because I'll be bringing new videos every day and I need your help. The story begins with a blonde girl in a fantasy world who was wearing clothes from our world and ended up hearing that 10 years had passed since the prophecy, and everyone was waiting for that day. Going into the past, we see a little boy trying to catch a beetle on top of a tree, until a very bright light appeared and made him fall to the ground. Right away, he thought it was aliens, but it was just the girl we saw earlier, but much younger. She introduced herself to the protagonist whose name is Satu and her name is Haim, and asked him not to tell anyone what she was seeing in exchange for becoming his friend. Without saying anything, the protagonist ended up accepting, because as soon as he saw the girl, he knew he had to protect her. Returning to the present, we see Satu waking up and being greeted by a breakfast made by Haim, who has a necklace with two rings, which of course the protagonist saw, as she is in a very strategic location. Furthermore, he noticed that she has grown a lot in these 10 years, and we can clearly see that Satu is in love with her. She lives with her grandfather, the only relative she has, and the protagonist lives with his father, who is never home because he is working. Regarding the rings, the protagonist remembered the past when Haim said that one day she would give one of them to the person she would marry, which is why they were so important to her. Furthermore, he asked Satu if he wanted to marry her when they grew up. When they arrive at school and receive the results of their final exams, we discover that Haim is very intelligent and one of the protagonist's friends was sad, as he would spend the summer vacation alone. He is also jealous of Satu for always being close to Haim, and they started calling him an idiot for not asking the girl out yet. While they were talking, Satu received a message from Haim inviting him to meet in front of the shrine after school. This made the protagonist have hope, and when he arrived at the place, he saw that the girl was wearing a kimono and looked very beautiful. She was very excited that they were at a festival, which brought back memories of when they had gotten lost together way back when, and the protagonist looked after her like a hero. When going through a game that had a giant stuffed animal, Haim asked the protagonist to get it for her, and showing great skill, Sata did it. With night approaching, the protagonist was about to confess his love to her, but before he could do that, the fireworks started which made Haim happy for having been able to see it together with him. Suddenly, she started talking to Satu about something she had kept to herself, which gave him more hope. However, Haim just said that she would move in the next day. When they arrived home, she thanked him for everything, and even though she was smiling, the girl seemed sad about having to leave. In his room, the protagonist was thinking about this until he saw the same light as 10 years ago. Because of that, Sata ran away as fast as he could and saw that Haim was still there. With that, she told the truth that she would return to her world, as she needed to get married since she is a princess. Crying, she said goodbye to him, but the protagonist couldn't leave it like that, so he decided to enter the portal. He was teleported to a church, where he was about to marry a prince, until a monster from the abyss appeared. The protagonist discovered that Haim's grandfather was actually a wizard, who, because he was distracted when he saw Sata there, was hit. On the ground, he told Haim to give the ring of light to the prince. However, she ran towards the protagonist and kissed him, which means they got married. The prince didn't seem to mind this and gave Satu a sword, which became shiny because of the ring's power. Even though he didn't understand what was happening, the protagonist defeated the monster and passed out shortly afterwards. When he woke up, he was in a double bed with his loved one, and because of everything that had happened, he wondered what that meant. Even though we know that she likes her, 
the girl lied, saying that she only chose Satu because she was his friend. Furthermore, she apologized for choosing him as the big hero, and we see that people were excited about his arrival. However, some citizens were afraid, as her marriage to the prince would bring about the union of the Kingdom of Light with the Empire. Satu and Haim were taken to talk to a crowd, and everyone was there to see the protagonist speak, who ended up getting really excited about it. When taking a shower, he realized that he was overly excited, and after hearing a noise, he saw that Haim appeared to bathe with him. Technically, this isn't a problem since they're married, but they were still very embarrassed. Haim apologized once again to Satu because the problems in this world have nothing to do with him, and now she puts him in the middle of it all. However, the protagonist made it clear that he was there willingly and said he wanted to protect her. This made Haim remember the past, when children teased her because of her different hair. However, Sata always defended her. The girl was very happy, said that he was always her hero, and thanked him. Returning to the couple's conversation, Sata confessed that he was very happy when she chose him, which made the girl ask if he liked her. He said yes, but ended up implying that she was like a dear friend. Suddenly, a bell starts ringing, which makes the protagonist stand up, and Haim is shocked to see the protagonist's pistol. Furthermore, we see that a villain approaches and wants the king of the ring. So, the protagonist ran to see what was happening and discovered that several monsters from the abyss were attacking. So, when picking up an axe, the weapon began to glow, which was explained by the wizard. By having the ring of light, the protagonist can repel evil, as the ring grants the light of purification to everything he holds. The protagonist doesn't really know what's going on, but he says that if he needs him, he'll do everything he can. So, the girl gives Satu a kiss, so, more excited than ever, he goes into battle. The monsters began to attack the citizens, and we see that one was about to eat a maid. However, the protagonist appeared and saved her. He was finding it strange to be so strong, as he had managed to kill more than one demon and had not fainted. Suddenly, the wizard appeared and said that this was because of the kiss he had just received from the princess. Furthermore, he explained that the strength of his bond as husband and wife directly translates into the power of the ring. Therefore, it is the princess's duty to provide strength to a king heading into battle. Even so, he said that Sato won't last much longer than that, but he shouldn't worry since the wizard is with him. We discovered that his name is Alabaster, and while they were talking, a being different from the previous ones appeared. This is a knight of the King of the Abyss, and without thinking twice, the protagonist attacked but was easily thrown away. With no other choice, Alabaster told Satu to run away with him, and with two monsters following them, the wizard had to use magic to slow them down. However, the villain turned around and was now in front of them. However, the prince appeared, and placing a sheet over the knight, he set fire to him. The prince took the two to a carriage where Haim was, and the girl seemed very happy to see that her lover was okay. The prince's name is too difficult to pronounce, so I will call him by his nickname, which is Moss. Furthermore, he asked Alabaster how the Kingdom of Light will be with their departure, and he replied that the King of the Abyss is only after the Rings and the King of the Ring. That is, the Kingdom will probably be fine, even if it is difficult. Eliminate strong monsters like that night. Knowing that people were in danger, Sata wanted to return, but the wizard said they couldn't do that as the protagonist wasn't strong enough yet. He said that for the protagonist to become stronger, he will still need the four missing rings. That is, Sata still needs to marry four more princesses to obtain their rings. The wizard seemed very excited when telling the protagonist this, but Haim doesn't like this idea at all. They arrived at an inn, however, there were only two free rooms, so Satu and she shared the same bed. With the break they had, Alabaster told the protagonist about the history of this world. Long ago, this world was on the verge of succumbing to the dark powers of the Abyss, but the King of the Rings appeared and sought to dispel this darkness. To do this, he forged rings imbued with magic, which are the rings of light, fire, water, wind, and earth. With his power, the King of the Ring fought a long and tiring battle, ultimately defeating and sealing the King of the Abyss. After that, 
five princesses married the King of the Rings and passed down five rings through the generations within their five nations. In this way, this set of five rings served as proof of the bond between the King of the Rings and those princesses. Now, the King of the Abyss has revived and is slowly regaining his power. So the King of the Ring must once again obtain the rings from each of the five princesses and use their power to seal the Abyss. After all this, they went to the room, and Heim said that the protagonist didn't need to worry about all that, as the wedding was just a formality. Suddenly, she realized that the protagonist was in pain, and when she took off his shirt, she saw several bruises. She started to blame herself for Sata being injured, as she was the one who chose him, so the girl ran away from there. Going after her, Satu came face to face with Moss, who said that the princess had just passed by. He deduced that the couple was having problems because of the tremendous responsibility they now have, but Sata said that was not the case. The prince commented that he was grateful to the protagonist, and was now relieved to have escaped the duty of being the king of the ring. Furthermore, he said that Satu is very brave for coming from another world for Haim as it is not an easy task to abandon his world for the woman he loves. After this conversation, Moss said where Haim ran, and the protagonist went after her. Upon arriving at the place, Sata revealed to Haim that he loves her and stated that he was there of his own free will, so she shouldn't blame herself. Haim said that she was very happy in Japan, where she didn't have to worry about her fate as the princess of the Ring of Light. However, when she arrived, she was about to marry a person she had never seen in her life. But luckily, Satu appeared, and she was able to marry the person she truly loves. However, this means that her beloved has become the king of the ring, meaning she will get hurt and have to marry other princesses, which she clearly doesn't like at all. That way, Haim said that she would try her best and asked him to marry her once again. The girl said that she would fulfill her role. With that, the two went back to the room, and we're about to do the same thing you're thinking. However, seeing that she was shaking, Sata couldn't continue and said that their first time must be sweeter than that. So, they decide to go little by little until they become a real couple, and after a kiss, they both go to sleep. However, the next day, we discovered that the two were unable to sleep because of the embarrassment of sharing a bed, and the wizard was disappointed to discover that they didn't do anything despite all the atmosphere that was going on. Suddenly, the prince appeared with two cloaks, as their clothes attracted a lot of attention because they were from another world. In this way, they continued their journey towards the elf village, where they would meet the princess of the Wind Ring. The city they were going to was a land where beautiful and wise elves lived. It was lined up in a deep valley and was known as a sacred place where the knowledge of the entire world was gathered. However, 50 years ago, a storm wall suddenly appeared, and we see that they just got there. We discovered that Alabaster was in that place before the wall appeared, and while they were thinking about how to get in, a giant bear appeared. Thinking it was a simple animal, the protagonist got too close, which he quickly regretted, so everyone ran away. However, they arrived at the wind wall, but with the help of some elves, they managed to get in while the bear flew away. Right away, Satu introduced himself as the king of the ring, and without asking much, the elves said they would take them to the palace to meet the princess. They were inside the roots of a giant tree, which is the only way to enter the city, which is very safe, as only small creatures can pass through there. That is, powerful monsters are expelled by the wind. Before entering the palace, the protagonist made it clear to Haim that he would only accept the ring to save the world and nothing more. So, when they entered, they met the princess, who seemed to be very shy and was afraid of the king of the rings. They started talking, and the only thing she wanted to know was if they already did that, however, it's not what you think. The girl just wants to know if the protagonists have already kissed, and when they said yes, the wind ring princess thought it was very indecent so she went behind the curtains and vomited, which none of them could understand. After that, Jade, the eldest son of the former king of that place and the princess's brother, appeared. Right away, he ordered his guards to arrest the protagonist, saying that he would take him into custody for a while, however, he will treat the others as guests of the state. In prison, Jade told the protagonist that his sister is very sensitive, and we see that he loves the girl too much. Furthermore, 
he said that for some reason the girl did not leave the palace, much less that nation, so she is not used to people from outside. He said that she is only 54 years old and too young to get married, so his plan is to keep Satu in prison until she is more mature, which is around 80 years old. Clearly, the protagonist didn't like this, as he would die of old age during this time. With Jade leaving there, we see him talking to a subordinate, until he revealed that he doesn't care about the King of the Abyss and said that the nation will be safe as long as they have the Storm Wall, so they just need to protect the ring from the wind. After three days, Sadu was wondering what he could do, until a beautiful woman appeared and climbed on top of him. She asked what the protagonist hopes to gain by gathering the five rings, and was very impressed when Sada said that he just wants his beloved to be happy. So, finding him strange but liking the boy, the woman decided to help him, and opening a secret passage, she told him to follow, and said that she wants to end the cage that holds the elves. After walking a little, they arrived at the Wind Temple, the place where the ring was. The protagonist found it strange that the ring was on a statue and not with the princess, but when she was about to explain, someone appeared. Nephritis arrived at the scene, and the girl started talking to the statues as if they were her parents and said that the king of the ring appeared to steal her ring. However, she said that she would not leave and would obey the order. From his mother to protect the nation. Sadhu found it strange that she was praying to the statues of her parents, but the woman corrected him, saying that those were the petrified bodies of her parents, who became like that because they used the power of the ring to create that barrier of wind. The protagonist was impressed by this and ended up making noise, so, to try to fool her, he tried to imitate a bird. Obviously, this didn't work, and when the protagonist appeared, the girl fainted, and he had to hold her. Because of the noise, a guard appeared, so they needed to escape from there as quickly as possible. We discovered that that mysterious woman is the elder of the elves, and she took the protagonist to a room with the intention of convincing Nephritis to give her ring to him. However, when the girl woke up and saw the king of the rings in front of her, the first thing she did was vomit. Meanwhile, Jade was desperately looking for her sister, and when she saw that Satu was not in prison, she suspected that he was the one who kidnapped the princess. Suddenly, the old woman appeared and said that the king of the ring had left with the maiden of the ring of wind. Furthermore, she said that they ran away together, and to make Jade even more angry, she said that Nephritis left with the man she loves. He didn't believe this, and after saying that Nephritis doesn't need to inherit the ring, Jade said that she would have her mansion inspected. Returning to the protagonist, he washed his and her clothes, and the girl couldn't believe that she stained the king of the ring's clothes. Sata asked her if the girl was afraid of him, to which she quickly replied yes. Nephritis said that she never left the palace, and for her, anyone from outside is scary, so someone like him who is from another world becomes even scarier. Sada said that it is true that he came from another world. However, he is not someone special and was probably similar to the humans in this world. When asking him what his world was like, Nephritis asked if in that world the oceans were full of orcs and goblins, and if they were attacked by dragons in the street. However, Satu corrected her, saying that there aren't even monsters like that in his world, so he said that in that sense, his world is a peaceful place. The protagonist noticed that she was very interested in his world, and commented that he thought she would be different because she was called a reclusive princess. She seemed a little upset, but said that she knows that others call her that. However, she would love to see the outside world, even if she is still very afraid of it. Normally, she just reads books that her elder brings from abroad. So she imagines what it would be like to go there, and gets excited imagining these things. Nephritis said that she lives in her room and can't do anything about it, and Sada comments that it's similar to her in that she wasn't there because of special powers or anything, just because she didn't want to be separated from the person she loves. That way, he took a risk and went all out, which made her excited. So she said she wants to go to his world and asked if he could take her one day. Sada said that he would have no problem doing that, but he couldn't concentrate properly as she was completely undressed in front of him. The protagonist asked her why the girl had never gone out before, given that she was so interested in the outside world. However, before she could respond, Jade and her soldiers appeared, and he told them both to get out of there. Before they left, 
Sata commented that he became the King of the Rings to help Haim and did not intend to force anyone to marry him, so he left it up to her to decide how he should be treated there. As they left, Jade told the King of the Ring to get away from her, but the girl tried to defend him, saying that Satu was a good person. He didn't listen to her, and the moment he commented on their parents' wishes, the girl became quiet and went to his side. Jade was about to sentence the protagonist for the crimes he committed. However, the elderly woman appeared, saying that it was all her doing. So the woman said that she would take care of the King of the Rings. Being alone with Satu, Haim demonstrated that she was jealous of the protagonist's closeness to Nephritis, and the two had a very cute moment because of it. The elderly woman introduced herself to Haim, saying that her name is Peridot, and that she is the oldest elf in that nation. The protagonist asked her if Nephritis' parents had anything to do with the way she acted. To begin with, Nephritis and Jade's mother was not the firstborn who would inherit the ring, as she had an older sister. Furthermore, to keep the ring in the elves' hands and protect them through the generations, it became customary for elf princesses to marry someone from the village. However, the eldest princess fell in love with a traveler, who was a human. Because of this, the elves began to fear that the traveler wanted to steal the wind ring. So the more the elves suspected, the more the princess' love for him grew, until one day, he never appeared to see her again. Perhaps he was expelled or killed, which left the villagers there relieved. However, the eldest princess's heart sank into anger and despair. So she left the village after leaving behind a curse, which said to the nation of the elves, be swallowed by the abyss and the lineage of the maidens come to an end. Because of the longevity of the elves, the inhabitants there were afraid of the elves' revenge, and the more time passed, the more the people became afraid. Because of this, Nephritis' parents, who inherited the ring in place of the eldest princess, called upon the power of the ring and created the storm wall, even though the price they paid was enormous. Now, they were in this situation, where Nephritis wanted to honor her parents' sacrifice and the promise she made to her mother. The next day, Alabaster told the protagonist to give up the wind ring for now, as the Abyss King's armies may be approaching and their mission is to get as many rings as possible. So, they can't afford to delay any longer at that location. So when they get the other rings, they can come back. Meanwhile, Jade was very happy that the King of the Rings was leaving. However, someone quickly arrived to deliver very bad news. The Abyss monsters managed to get through the storm wall, as a powerful monster managed to open a hole in it. With that, before they left, Satu and the others saw the monsters and returned to the palace, but before that, the couple shared a kiss to fuel the power of the Ring of Light. The monsters were causing chaos in the place, and Peridot was trying to convince Nephritis to do something, which unfortunately didn't work. The scene cuts, and we see that same powerful monster from the second episode, which managed to reach the ring. However, Jade appeared to stop him but ended up taking a quick beating. Just as she was about to take another hit, Satu and the others appeared, and they went after the monster. However, they also didn't seem to have a chance against the monster, and Haim remembered the kiss they had, which she stopped halfway through because she was embarrassed. That way, she realized that it wasn't enough, and that's why she ran to find Nephritis. Alabaster wanted to retreat, but Sata said no, because if they did that, the monster would get the wind ring. Suddenly, the old woman appeared and said that the Maiden of the Ring of Light went to call Nephritis, all because she was worried about him, so she joined the battle. Even though it was difficult for Haim, she asked Nephritis to marry Satu. She said that her parents also died trying to protect the ring and that she knows about the weight of inheriting this responsibility. Haim asked Nephritis to get up and help Sat to protect everyone, because at that moment, he was giving his all to save her home. She knows her husband is kind, so she will end up fighting to the limit, even if it could kill him. Thus, understanding that she was not alone enough, Haim begged Nephritis to marry Satu to save him. Returning to the battle, the princesses appeared with a giant hammer, and together they broke the elf's parents. Thus, getting the rings, Nephritis jumped on the protagonist and kissed him, which made their marriage official. Because of this, the wind barrier fell. However, using their powers together, they destroyed all the monsters outside. Taking advantage of the fact that the Abyss Knight was also injured, 
the King of the Ring launched the final blow and, after using the Wind Ring to protect himself, finished off the monster with his sword. A while later, Sata woke up and saw his two wives, until the old woman appeared and let another elf enter the room. The woman thanked the protagonist for saving her nation, and we discovered that she was the older sister of the previous queen, the one who had left, swearing revenge. After Satu broke the knight's mask, they discovered who she was. However, the woman was being controlled by an evil wind ring. Seeing the hatred that the elf was feeling towards her family, the king of the abyss took advantage of her and used her to battle. Basically, the villain is using these rings to create abyss knights, which is threatening their world a lot. When trying to get up, the protagonist saw that he was still very weak and also realized that he now had two wives. Nephritis invited him to bathe in a spring that has healing properties, so the king of the ring went there with his wives. When they arrived, the elf asked Heim to teach her how to be a good wife, and she was very embarrassed to say that they kiss a lot. Suddenly, Peridot appears to find out how they did things in the other world. So Heim went after Satu, but he stopped her, saying that he wouldn't be taken in by the situation. In another place, we see Alabaster and the elf who was being controlled, who asked the wizard if he had met her lover. Suddenly, he handed her a gift that the elf had given to her lover, and Alabaster said that he had known the man for a long time. When she asked if he was alive, the wizard told her what the man told him. That he left because he couldn't bear to see his beloved ostracized because of him. Furthermore, he is now living a peaceful life on a farm far away from there. The next day, after saying goodbye to her parents, Nephritis went with the protagonist on his journey, saying that her role is to stay with him and also that she wants to see the outside world. That way, they left happily for the next ring maiden. Meanwhile, we discover that Peridot is the original princess who married the first king of the ring, and while she was talking to the elf, they heard some men talking about Alabaster. And upon hearing that name, we discovered that the wizard was her beloved. The scene shorts, and we see Heim, where she is waiting for Satu like a good wife with dinner ready, but made the proposal for them to do something more adult together. However, instead of going to bed with her, he went with Nephritis, and she had to look at all of this. However, this was just a nightmare. But when she screamed, she saw Sata being kind to the elf. They started talking about which ring they would go after, and Alabaster said that he planned to go to the Land of Water, which made the prince very happy. Meanwhile, Heim was observing how the protagonist was taking care of Nephritis recently, which was making the girl jealous. Furthermore, when Sata told Heim to help herself to food, she was irritated, but out of shame, she tried to get out of there. The protagonist managed to hold it back, and when they realized it, a giant city was passing by them. Alabaster said they were in luck and figured that this was the land of fire, where the cat people live. So, the wizard said that they should go up and get the princess's ring of fire there, which made Mars upset, as he wanted to go to the water nation, and the protagonist wanted to see this. Suddenly, at Alabaster's request, someone threw a rope for them to climb, but Nephritis was too scared to do that, so Satu would help. However, tired of seeing her husband being kind to the elf, Heim said she would help her. That way, even with difficulty, they managed to climb up, and Nephritis fell in love with the place. He commented that it looked more like a sales place than a place for warriors, but Nephritis told her something she read in a book. Traders try to travel with the cat people for their protection. They lost their nation during the era of the first king of the ring, so they built their capital under wheels and became a nation that traveled the world selling their martial prowess. Thus, they could even be called mercenaries. At first, the wizard's plan was to get an audience with the Maiden of the Ring of Fire. However, they realized that the two princesses had disappeared. Nephritis was delighted with the books and food she had at the place, and when she went to talk to Satu, she discovered that she was alone with Heim, so she began to despair that they were lost. So, the elf vomited, and after she calmed down, they talked to two women, who told them to go to the arena, as they might meet their friends there. Meanwhile, Satu was desperate because of their disappearance, but Alabaster calmed him down, saying that the city was very safe. Furthermore, Sata discovered that some cat girls were watching them, and Mars said that cat people value strength above all else. With that, 
The protagonist thought they were admiring his strength. However, the one they were interested in was the prince. Taking advantage of this, Mars told them where they could find the princess, so they took them to the arena, where the princess suitors were. Returning to the girls, they stopped to eat something and chatted. Nephritis commented that Haim is kind like Satu, and said that she feels like she is being taken care of by her parents. However, Haim said that the elf is older than her, so there was no way she could be their daughter. Furthermore, Nephritis apologized to her, as lately, Satu has had to focus on taking care of her, and she knows that this has made Haim jealous. The girl tried to say no, but when Nephritis commented that this was proof that she really loved Satu, Haim was happy. Even if it felt a little awkward when the elf said that it was different with her, as she could only have admiration for Satu. She then had doubts about being able to play her role as a wife. Suddenly, a man flew out of the arena, and they were able to see their friends, so when they entered, they superficially understood what happened. Basically, the princess there doesn't want to marry someone who is weaker than her, so she decided that she would duel all her suitors and marry whoever beats her. Upon seeing the king of the ring, she became interested, so she went up to test him, and he managed to dodge the first blow. However, he was quickly defeated. After that, Sada started training together with Mars, but he couldn't even touch him. With the food arriving, they took a break, and the man who brought the food commented that the fire princess's husband needs to be strong. However, no man in the country is her match. So she started looking for people willing to court her from other countries, but to date, no one has come close to winning. This discouraged Satu, but Alabaster said that with just his sword skills, it would be impossible. However, he has two powerful rings. The protagonist thought it was unfair to use magic, but the workat commented that magical power is basically a wizard's muscles, so it was allowed. After that, he saw the princess defeat another suitor without even trying, and while he was thinking, Haim went to talk to him. Satu was waiting for Alabaster to learn magic, and she let him lay some on her lap as a reward for his hard work. Nephritis saw this, and Haim told Satu that she thought it was okay for him to be weak, as she believes that as long as he uses the power of the rings well, it will be enough. And as the rings are stronger according to his bond with his wives, she will do her best for it. With Alabaster appearing, they began magic training, and after that, the boy went to a sauna with Mars. The protagonist commented that Mars is very good with a sword, so the prince said that in the Empire, they need to be good with both the pin and the sword. However, his older brother and his father are better than him. Sato asked if he would be able to beat Granart, the princess of the Land of Fire, if he were the king of the rings, but Mars just commented that she wouldn't be able to beat her with her swordsmanship alone. A girl appeared and offered the two a scrub, and of course Sato accepted, as he thought she would do it. However, an extremely muscular catman appeared to do the job and left the protagonist with smooth skin. Suddenly, Granard appeared and told the protagonist to exfoliate her, which he accepted and found her body impressive. The princess commented that she was tired of facing so many suitors, so she wants to give Satu a hand and said that she wouldn't mind losing the next time he tries to woo her. With that, she commented that they just need to put on a show, that way, he can make her his and make the most of that body. However, the protagonist was offended by all this and said that he doesn't need her to go easy on him because he really wants to win, so she told Sata to do the best he can, and we see that now he is more than ever, determined to get stronger. The next day, when the protagonist wakes up, he finds Nephritis under his blanket, and she wants to do whatever is necessary to help him with the fight. Satu thanked her for her support, but contrary to what you're thinking, he just got up and went back to training, leaving the elf with a slightly sad face. During training, Mars saw that the protagonist had improved a lot, and when she said this, she left Sata with a lot of hope. While Haim saw all this from above, and ended up hearing a strange conversation about the King of the Ring having already taken Granert's body. Returning to her room, she was embarrassed as she heard it was just a scrub, but still, the girl was very embarrassed. After a while, we see that it was the protagonist's turn to challenge the Maiden of the Fire Ring, and Haim seemed very worried. Meanwhile, a man who had just been defeated saw a mysterious ring on the ground, until the evil ring possessed him. 
Thus, before the battle began, they noticed confusion, and when Satu would be hit, Granart protected him. That man took on the appearance of an Abyss Knight and managed to summon some monsters to help him. However, some Cat Knights appeared. Granart went after the villain, but before he could hit him, his sword melted. Taking advantage of the distraction, Sata tried to combine wind magic with his sword. However, the blow had no effect, and he was hit. Granart told Satu to leave it with her, as the woman said she belonged to the race that helped the first king of the ring defeat the king of the abyss, so it was her job to keep him safe. However, Satu didn't want to be left out of the battle, and said he would use the ring's magic to help her. In this way, the protagonist attracted the knight's attention, and when he got close, Sati used wind magic to put out the flames. Granart managed to hit him, and after giving the sword to the protagonist, he gave the final blow using light magic. After that, the other warriors appeared to say that they had already defeated the monsters, and the man who was controlled got up as if nothing had happened. Granart admitted that she underestimated the protagonist and said that he has potential, which is why she wants to recognize him as her husband. However, the protagonist denied it and said that he would make her recognize him with his strength, which is why he challenged her once again. With the battle beginning, she attacked him, managing to hit him, and Haim couldn't bear to see her beloved suffering. But when Nephritis asked if she wouldn't support Satu and said he was fighting for her, Haim started to pay attention in the fight and discovered that the protagonist was trying so hard to look cool for her. Thus, being happy because of this, Haim started rooting for him and said that if he wins, she will sleep with him as a reward. So, no one could stop his determination anymore, and a voice began to come out of the rings, saying that it would help him and that it would interpret Granert's attacks for him. With this, the protagonist will be able to fight without the strength of his wife. And with the ring telling him where Granart would attack, Sata managed to beat her, and she jumped on top of him to kiss him. So they got married, and Granart wanted to start making babies right away. However, Sata said that she should wait, as he already has an appointment with Haim. With night approaching, the two went to bed, and he threw himself on top of her, who had already accepted that they would do that. However, Satu was too tired, so he ended up sleeping. When he woke up, he couldn't remember what happened, and we discovered that Nephritis and Granart were also in the room, and they said they would be next. However, before anything else, there was a banquet waiting for them, where Haim became jealous and ended up drinking too much. Because of this, he took her to his room, and while they were talking, he revealed that he planned to do that to her when they returned to his world, and said that he didn't want it to be a prize or anything like that. She thanked him but still wanted to do something for all his effort, so she sent him to ask for something, and of course he asked to take her melons. The other princesses were seeing all this, so Granart couldn't hold back, saying that she was already 18 years old and that in her race, she was already considered a spinster. However, Haim and Nephritis realized that the girl was like that because of catnip, so they hit Granart with a bench, and thus, the king of the ring's chastity was preserved. Continuing their journey in search of the Ring Maidens, they came to Masa, the land of water. This reminded the protagonist that Mas really wanted to go there, until while he was thinking about it, a girl appeared in front of the protagonist and gave him flowers, claiming to be a big fan. However, she suddenly kissed him. So Sata got married, got the ring from the water and couldn't understand what had happened. The girl seems to be very bossy, and said that the protagonist needed to help her save her kingdom. A general appeared saying that Saphir should go back to the palace, and as she ended up marrying the king of the ring, he took everyone there. During the journey, the girl told them why so many soldiers from the empire were there. Basically, the Jazara's empire is humanity's largest nation, and it continues to grow by establishing links with many other nations. That general they saw earlier is called Sluter and is Masa's older brother. In addition, the Empire uses its strength to occupy other territories, saying that they are protecting them from the monsters of the Abyss as a pretext. Arriving at the palace, Granart warns Satu of some danger, and thanks to this, he was able to react, showing himself to be much better with the use of the rings by easily defeating the monster. Which made Saphir think that the protagonist could really help her. As they entered, 
The king of Masa didn't seem at all happy to see that the king of the ring was there. Apparently, there is a woman who serves as the kingdom's oracle, and she was doing the king's head in, saying that disaster will strike with the arrival of the king of the ring. Saphir said that his father had come to depend completely on that woman, and now he was like that, even though in the past he had been considered a wise king. As they walked through the palace, Saphira, Saphir's twin sister, appeared, who was angry with her sister for having decided on her own to marry such a simple-looking man. Basically, she believed that her sister would get a much better-looking man, which made Sada's wives try to defend him, even though Haim was the only one who called him handsome. Saphir made this decision so as not to force his sister, until Moss joined the conversation and said she hadn't forgotten her promise to Saphira, but the girl wouldn't even look him in the face. So she ran off. The protagonist and his wives didn't understand what had happened, so Saphir explained everything to them. A long time ago, the Empire wasn't satisfied with just possessing human territories, so they decided to invade Masa. However, they realized that it wouldn't be a good idea to fight, so the Empire turned to diplomacy. Moss was sent there saying that he wanted to learn about the history of the Land of Water and promote friendship between the nations. It wasn't long before he and Saphira became close, but Moss had a secret duty to inform the Empire about the inner workings of Masa. However, he never did, so he promised his beloved that he would return for her. However, because he had failed in his mission, the boy was summoned back to the Empire and several months later, he sent a letter to Saphira, saying that he would become the King of the Ring by order of his father, so he could go and fetch her. This made the girl very happy, as she would be able to fulfill her duty as the Ring Maiden and marry the one she loves. But Moss abandoned his role as King of the Ring. So the girl believes that Moss has abandoned his promise. Meanwhile, he was trying to talk to Saphira and told her that his feelings were still the same. However, crying, she asked him why he hadn't become the King of the Ring, and all he could say was that he didn't think he was worthy. Returning to the story, shortly after the letter, the Oracle appeared, and even though no one believed her at first, the woman's predictions began to come true. And as she became useful against the monsters, she managed to stay by the King's side and Masa became what he is today. Sato asked if the Oracle had been hired by the Empire, to which Saphir said he thought so, even though he had no proof. The scene cuts, and we see the woman, who was angry about what Saphir had done, and ordered some assassins to kill the Ring King and take the rings. During the night, they went to Sada's room, but Granart had been expecting this and put the two of them to sleep, where she discovered that they were human, but before she could capture them, a smoke grenade was activated, and they disappeared. The next day, she told them what had happened, and another assassin tried to hit the protagonist with an arrow, but Alabaster stopped him easily. They went to an area with some swimming pools, where we get the fan service of the episode and Granart commenting that the protagonist's body was making her want to have children with him. Seeing her going down on her lover, Haim showed up, so the two started arguing about who would do it with him first, and with Saphir showing up, the dispute only escalated further. Later, Satu went to talk to Moss, and he felt guilty about Masa being like that. So the protagonist asked him why Moss had given up being the King of the Ring. He replied that the weight of the position was too much for him, but that's not the whole truth. In fact, when he saw Haim's happy face when the protagonist appeared, he didn't want to interfere, because he knew what she was feeling. During the night, Moss tried to convince her brother not to meddle in Moss's affairs, but Sluter didn't care what he said. He just told Moss to keep reporting back to the Empire about the Ring King's activities. After that, the Oracle went to talk to Moss and told him to steal the rings, because that was the Emperor's will. So, telling him that in three days an army of monsters would attack, she ordered Moss to use this distraction to put an end to the Ring King. Telling the Prince that he shouldn't betray the Emperor's wishes once again, the Oracle showed him a sword that distorts the flow of magic. She told him that she would give him the sword to end the life of the King of the Ring, but the moment he held the sword, something strange happened. Remembering his father calling him useless, Moss became angrier and angrier, until after seeing his beloved, the sword began to glow and his expression changed completely. A while later, everyone was gathered in the palace to talk about the attack by some monsters. 
but even though Satu offered to go and help, the general didn't want to and said he would go with his soldiers. So after looking at the oracle and her brother, he told the protagonist to take care of the palace. Thinking that a battle might break out, Haim went to kiss Satu to give him power, and of course Granart didn't take it lying down and did the same. So, thinking he should help, Nephritis kissed his cheek. Seeing the girls fighting over who would give more love, Saphir felt sick, but Alabaster said it was good for increasing the power of the rings. The scene cuts, and we see the Empire soldiers fighting a kraken, until one of the general's subordinates went to say that everything was going well. But another soldier arrived and said that a giant monster had appeared outside the battle area and was heading straight for the palace. However, the general didn't want to send anyone there, saying that the palace would be fine. When the monster appeared, the girls ran inside, but Moss took her sword out of its sheath and attacked the protagonist. Having no other choice, Alabaster said he would take care of the monster while Satu fought Moss. Sata didn't understand why his friend was trying to kill him, but the wizard told him that Moss was being controlled by something. Knowing that he couldn't win with his sword skills alone, Sata tried to use magic, but the sword cut through it easily. Finding this interesting, the ring spoke to the protagonist once again, but told him not to hesitate, as he would be able to finish Moss off using the ring's magic. However, Sata didn't want to hurt him until he realized that even though he was no match for Moss, he was managing to hold him off. So, looking at his face, the protagonist understood everything. At the palace, the girls found out what was going on, so they want to see the battle. When Moss went to attack the protagonist, Sata lowered his sword, letting the blow hit him. But Moss parried the attack and the protagonist knew he would do it. For having hurt the King of the Ring, he knelt down and asked Satu to kill him because the woman he loves has abandoned him and he is a failure as an imperial prince. Moss believes that he is worthless, but the protagonist has made it clear that he would have already died if it hadn't been for him. And since Moss doesn't believe that he is worth anything, Sata says that he will make him very valuable, because Sata will make Moss save the world together with him. After saying that he needs it, the ring told him where the protagonist should strike, so he was able to end the mind control. However, Alabaster could no longer hold back the monster, which was about to hit Heim but was stopped by Granart. Meanwhile, the monster managed to catch Sephira and the Oracle appeared, saying that she would release the princess if Moss killed Satu, but he didn't want to do what she asked. So he asked his beloved to marry him in the middle of the confusion, which gave the protagonist the chance to cut the tentacle holding the girl. This made the Oracle extremely angry, until she proved to be a knight of the abyss and made the kraken even more monstrous. Tired of this mess, Saphir went up to the protagonist and gave him a kiss on the cheek. So they used the power of the water ring and the girl showed why they call the inhabitants they're the dragon people. After transforming, she ate the monster's head, but the villain managed to escape. After resolving this situation, Moss and the protagonist came to an understanding and in the palace, we see that the king is back to normal. He thanked the Ring King for everything he had done and told the princes of the empire that from now on, the land of water will protect itself with its own strength. However, he knows that the empire is a powerful ally, so they will continue to work together when necessary. In addition, the king apologized to Saphir, as she had to sort everything out while he was being controlled. But when he said that she had found a good husband, the girl once again snubbed the protagonist. With this matter settled, Moss asked the king to allow him to marry Saphira, to which he gladly agreed. Moss then looked at Satu and said that he would be next, which the protagonist and Haim didn't understand, as they had married first. But they quickly realized that the prince was referring to something more adult. And with Moss's brother showing that he was happy with his attitude, everything ended well. Meanwhile, in the Empire, the villain went to talk to the Emperor and wanted to combine her power to control monsters with his to conquer more nations. However, when she turned around, the Emperor cut her in half, realizing that she had tried to control him. Basically, he was only allying himself with her for his own benefit, and after saying that this world no longer belonged to the gods but to humans, the Emperor made it clear that he would exterminate anyone who got in his way be it the King of the Abyss or the King of the Ring. During the night, 
In the protagonist's room, Granart was demanding to sleep next to Satu, as she is also his wife. As a result, they were all arguing to see who would do it, but the protagonist made it clear to everyone that Haim would always be number one for him. Nephritis said she already knew that, but said she didn't care and would wait as long as it took. In addition to her, Granart and Saphir also said the same, but the Catwoman made a scene and jumped on him. This made Sata think of them without clothes, until someone asked him why he was hesitating. In the end, however, it was a dream and when he woke up, they were all stuck to him. When he woke up, the first thing the protagonist did was ask him out on a date and the elf wanted to go along, but Sata said he wanted to have a moment alone with his beloved. Claiming to understand what he wanted, Granart said that they could have fun while she took care of things there. Later, Sada went to talk to Alabaster and asked for money so that he could go out with Haim. At first, the magician didn't want to give him any money, but when he heard that it was to go out with Haim, he changed his mind, thinking that the protagonist wanted to take the girl to an adult hotel. So he gave Satu a bag of money and told him that the boy didn't have to come back at night. After that, they left together and went to the local tourist attractions, but the other girls were there to observe the couple's encounter, as they want to know everything the protagonist does with Haim in order to blackmail him later. It didn't take long for the townspeople to discover that the protagonist is the king of the ring, so they stopped to talk to him and it didn't seem like a date anymore. However, Haim didn't mind, as she thought the protagonist was happy. As they continued walking around, she remembered the last time they went out together, which was in Japan and she thought she would never see him again, so she was very grateful that he had gone to her world. The others were watching and Nephritis was envious of how close the two of them were. Granart also commented that in the protagonist's world, it might be common for a person to be with just one girl, and said that it might be difficult to get him to change his mind. Satu and Haim went to a park where couples usually go, and they found themselves kissing a lot. Suddenly, an atmosphere began to develop between the two and they were about to kiss, but the protagonist backed away, because for him, it's too embarrassing to do it in public. No longer able to stand this drama and thinking that nothing will happen between the two, the other princesses left and Nephritis commented that it was the first time she had been out with friends. However, Saphir asked if their age difference wasn't too great for her to call them friends, which made the elf feel sad. While they were ordering some ice cream, Haim noticed that the girls were leaving and while they were eating, the protagonist commented that her world is not so different from his, and that he wants to protect it to help her. As it was getting late, they decided to go home and as they walked, she asked if she could consider it a date, to which he replied that he meant it. Sada said that he had always wanted to do these things with her, but with a sad expression, the girl commented that now he would no longer be able to devote himself only to her, as the others were also his wives. So even though she's happy with the special treatment he gives her, the girl feels that it's exhausting. The other princesses are also trying to do their duty and are determined to follow him. Soheim says that Sata shouldn't neglect their feelings. However, even after she said all this, the protagonist continued to say that Haim is the only one for him and to try to make her understand, he kissed her. However, being a wimp, he couldn't go through with it and tried to leave for home, but she stopped him, saying that she didn't want to go back yet. This made Sata think of only one thing, and as they were in front of an inn, it was even more obvious what they should do. However, even though the protagonist seemed prepared for it, Ham couldn't help himself and told them to go home. The next day, Saphir was complaining about having to travel together with the protagonist, and she even tried to push her sister into the journey, which didn't work. Later, while talking to Safira, the girl said she thought Moss would stay in town with her. However, Safira seemed unruffled by this, saying that her beloved had found his own duty. What's more, she said that she would stay there to look after their father and the city, so she asked Safir to use the power of the ring to protect Moss. During the trip, the protagonist wanted to know more about the land of the earth, which is in the far north and the capital of the dwarves is inside a mountain range. They began to pepper Alabaster with questions, but the wizard said he knew nothing about it. So Saphir told them that the dwarves were exterminated in the battle between the King of the Ring and the King of the Abyss, so all that remained of the city were ruins. As such, they don't know if the ring is there, nor if there is a princess, 
so the wizard said that he doesn't have any answers, so they'll have to find out for themselves. And to make matters worse, the place where they are going is on a very high mountain and they will have to make their way on foot. Three days passed and they were still walking to find the ring maiden of the earth, which the protagonist couldn't stand any longer. Granart came back and said that the way to go was safe, but the protagonist said that they didn't need to worry, because if anything happened, Saphir could turn into a dragon. However, she said that doing so is very exhausting and using so much magic affects her back and legs. Besides, when she asked if the others understood this, Saphir realized that none of them knew how to use magic, which made her want to leave. As night fell, they set up a tent and while they slept, the protagonist talked to Alabaster. Sata asked if it really made sense to gather the rings, because the people of the Empire were planning to fight the King of the Abyss without relying on the power of the rings, and since they can fight monsters, it might work. The protagonist feels that people aren't really expecting him to save the world, but the wizard explained that the world is vast and many people live with their own ideas, so it's natural for them to pin their hopes on different things. However, Alabaster has learned many things by traveling during his life and has heard many terrifying legends about the King of the Abyss, so he thinks it would be difficult for humanity to win without the power of the rings. In this way, he puts the protagonist at ease, saying that they will probably get the five rings before the King of the Abyss returns, but when Sata goes to sleep, we see that the wizard is not so confident in these words. The next day, after a long walk, they found the land of the earth, the lost capital of the dwarves. The place was badly destroyed because of the countless battles they had fought against the King of the Abyss and Nephritis wondered if the dwarves had really disappeared. Saphir wanted to wait where she was while they searched for the Ring of Earth, but Granart offered to carry her. So, embarrassed, the girl said she could walk. Meanwhile, Heim sensed that someone was near them, but Moss said it was probably just her imagination. When they arrived at the throne, they realized that the place was preserved, and when the protagonist saw something on the floor, he asked Alabaster what it was. Alabaster said that it was a kind of doll that the dwarves could control using magic. This race used to build various devices that worked with magical power, and the vehicle that the Land of Fire uses to move around was one of their creations. However, despite creating so much equipment, no one knows what happened to the dwarves, and as they had no clues about the Ring of Earth, Alabaster suggested they go underground. Suddenly, however, one of the puppets stood up and seemed to be very angry with the other people. He was wearing a Ring of the Abyss and went after the protagonist, making a wall between him and his friends. Alone, a strange voice took over the doll and ordered the protagonist to leave, referring to him as a strange being. The monster said that Sada had no reason to fight in this war, but the protagonist said that even though he wasn't from this world, he would save the people who were important to Haim, even if he had to risk his life. After that, Alabaster broke through the wall and after earning a kiss, Satu went up to the monster and defeated it with just one blow. They didn't know if those words were really from the dwarves or the king of the abyss corrupting the doll, and when Sata went to check, the ring had disappeared and a voice said that the time for the resurrection of the old king had come. All the other rings also disappeared, and even the emperor understood that the king of the abyss had returned with his full power. Suddenly, two monsters appeared to attack the protagonist's group and when they went outside, they discovered that it was much worse than they had imagined. Satu asked Saphir to transform, but she explained that she wouldn't be able to do it in a land with so little water magic. With no other choice, they began to fight, but no matter how many monsters they defeated, it seemed like it would never end. With that, Alabaster used light magic to blind them, and they all took off running. The wizard made a wall of earth to slow them down, but when he looked back, he understood what was really going on. He discovered that the King of the Abyss had been fully resurrected, and with a gigantic army of monsters coming towards them, there was nothing they could do. Since they hadn't yet obtained the Five Rings to harness the Ring King's true power, Sada tried to cheer Alabaster up by saying that they would be able to find the Ring of Earth later, but the wizard knew that there was nowhere in this world that they could hide. So Alabaster began to open a portal, saying that he would not let the rings fall into the hands of the King of the Abyss. Just as he was about to be hit, 
Moss saved him, and before they left, Alabaster asked Satu to take good care of the girls and free them from the fate of the rings. In this way, they were teleported away, and together with Moss, the magician stayed to fight until the end. The scene cuts, and we see the protagonist waking up in his old bed, and while he was remembering the day before, we see what happened. They were teleported to Japan and Haim was crying a lot because he knew it was the end of his grandfather. Returning to the present, Haim was teaching the girls to wear bras, which Granart thought was pointless. Worried about them, Sata went to check on them and, hearing what they were talking about, realized that it would be difficult to teach them how this world worked. Trying to make the girls look more like the people there, Haim took them to a place to buy some clothes, and two women wondered if there was an event going on. As there was a girl with horns, and another with cat ears. The protagonist realized that Haim was having fun doing this, and then they all want to get something to eat at a snack bar. While they were eating, they talked about going back to the other world, but they had no idea how to do it, so they were at a loss. Granart, Haim and Nephritis didn't seem too concerned about their people, unlike Saphir. Besides, even though she kept complaining, she was eating non-stop, which Sadha wasn't sure she could afford until Haim told her to leave it to her. Later, when they went to take a bath, Granart mentioned that there were no races other than humans in that world, so she had the brilliant idea of creating more cat people there, meaning it was time to make babies, because the room was too small for all of them. Haim went to sleep next to the protagonist and they talked about the money she had spent. Haim said that Alabaster had left her a box containing a letter and some money. He had made this letter in case their mission didn't work out, and he wrote to the girl to forget Arnulus, their world, and live a happy life there. This made Haim very sad, as she missed her grandfather very much. As the vacation ended, the next day Satu and Haim went to school, and so several days passed. Nephritis started going to the library to learn more about this world. Granart made some friends in the neighborhood, and Saphir remained sad at home. Thinking of a way to get back to Arnulus. The protagonist went to the forest where they had teleported, until Haim appeared, saying she knew he went there every night. Sada said she didn't mind being back, but was wondering what the other princesses were feeling. However, she mentioned what Alabaster had said before sending them there, that Satu should free the princesses from the fate of the ring, meaning that they need to find their own happiness in that world. So Haim asked Satu to forget the other world and find happiness there with her. Suddenly, the protagonist pulled her away, and just as he was about to say something, a very bright light came out of the shrine. A girl came out, saying that she had been waiting for a long time, but now she had finally found the King of the Ring. Her name is Amber, and she is the Ring Maiden of the Earth. She explained why she was in that world. In the past, when the war against the King of the Abyss ended, there were only a few dwarves left who survived. Eventually, the dwarves would die out and the land would become extinct. So, knowing this, they created her, a replica of the dwarf princess, and transported her to this world along with the ring to prevent anyone from stealing it. She had been waiting for centuries, so she wanted to connect with Satu, but Haim wouldn't let her, and saying that the king of the abyss had already been resurrected, told her that the protagonist wouldn't be returning to Arnulus. Realizing that her destiny would not be fulfilled, Amber returned to the shrine, but before she did, she told them to call her if they changed their minds. At home, Granart was complaining that the protagonist was spending too little time with them, and they noticed that Saphir was still very sad. Also, when Sada was going to tell them what had happened, Haim interrupted him, so when the others were asleep, they talked about it alone. She didn't want to say anything because they didn't have a guarantee that the protagonist would be able to beat the King of the Abyss even using the Five Rings, so she was very afraid that something would happen to him. However, while she was saying all this and that they need to find happiness in this world, we see that Granart was listening in. The next day, while they were on their way to school, Sada saw that Amber was following him, as she believed that being with him was part of her mission. On the way back, while looking at some fruit and vegetables, Amber appeared and told the protagonist to buy apples, as she knows they are good, since the family that owns that store always offers them as a tribute at the shrine where she stays. During the night, Satu went there to talk to her, where the girl told him that she could send them back to Arnulus as soon as they connected, and she regained all her powers. 
Satu couldn't give the girl an answer, but the next day, while he was thinking about it on the school terrace, Amber appeared once again. However, unlike before, the protagonist had made up his mind, so by asking her to give him her ring, the two connected and the king of the ring was finally complete. When Sata got home, he saw Haim crying because she had remembered Alabaster, until when she looked at his hand, she realized what he had done. The protagonist said that he intended to return to Arnulus, which made her sad, afraid of losing her beloved, but Satu said that they would have the power to defeat the king of the abyss. Because the power of the rings lies in the bond they have, and as he loves Haim more than anyone, they will be fine. This made her very relieved, so she decided to keep that promise she made to him to beat Granart. So the two of them went to bed, and the protagonist was close to being reunited with his beloved. However, to spoil Satu's joy, Amber appeared and had already prepared the teleportation spell to take them back to Arnulus. What's more, she can only use this spell once, which means that if they don't go now, they'll never be able to go again. Understanding what was happening, Granard appeared carrying the other two. So, with everyone together, they were ready to return to Arnulus and give the King of the Abyss a beating. Returning to the girls' world, Amber couldn't feel any living beings near them, until they looked around a bit and saw several monsters and dead Empire soldiers. They were worried that the world had already been destroyed, but when they heard something, they saw an army of monsters fighting against the Imperial Army. In addition, the King of the Abyss was also there, so after receiving affection from the girls, Satu went into battle, proving to be much more powerful than before. However, his attack had no effect on the Abyss King. So, because of this, the ring spoke to the protagonist and the voice said that it would unite his powers. In this way, the five rings became one and Sata gained much more power than before. With all this energy, he couldn't contain himself, so he attacked the villain, believing that victory would be his. But the worst thing happened. The King of the Abyss was still alive, something that even the voice coming from the rings didn't believe. What's more, having used too much power, the protagonist fell to the ground unable to move. Seizing his chance, the King of the Abyss began to put an end to Satu, until his wives showed up to help. As only Granart and Amber could fight, they had to defend everyone from the various monsters that had been summoned, but it seemed that they wouldn't be able to win and Satu couldn't help them. After fainting, the protagonist began to dream that he was marrying Haim until he realized he was on the terrace of his school, and the King of the Abyss appeared to put an end to him. However, Satu woke up to find Alabaster saving them all. The wizard and Mars were fine thanks to the elf who was in love with Alabaster, because she came to their rescue when it looked like it would be the end. He tried to cheer up the protagonist, saying that the King of the Abyss was probably badly hurt. Alabaster told him what was happening in the world. The King of the Abyss had begun to invade and the Imperial Army had stopped his advance at the Great Wall of the Mountain, but they weren't strong enough to hold them there. After Saphir asked how his nation was doing, he told him that they were still standing and Moss was there to help. However, the problem is that the number of monsters isn't decreasing, it's only increasing, so the situation is in constant decline. However, with the return of the Ring King, they now have hope and will be able to defeat evil. When they arrived in a kingdom, a child came to talk to Satu, asking if everything would be all right now that he was back. The protagonist didn't back down and told her that he would save the world. Left alone with Alabaster, Saphir asked why Satu's attack hadn't defeated the King of the Abyss, to which Alabaster had only one explanation. The black rings that the King of the Abyss was wearing. This wasn't even in Amber's records, yet it was certain that the Ring King of the past had defeated the villain, but they don't know how much power it took to do so. So there's only one thing they can do, extract even more power from the rings before the next battle, which means they'll all need to get much closer to Satu. Granart came to the conclusion that they needed to make babies and Alabaster agreed that it was a good option. Suddenly, Moss appeared to see how her friends were doing and Alabaster got down to business. In the past, the ring princesses are said to have sided with the ring king in battle, so in order to extract the power of the rings, they will need to get stronger to fight alongside Satu. So they all take part in training, especially Haim and Nephritis, who are of no use in battle. As night fell, 
A maid took the protagonist to his room, where all his wives were. They were ready to give him whatever he wanted, but I don't think he did anything with any of them. The next day, the protagonist was alone with Haim, who was on her way to deliver flowers to her dead parents. She also told him that she has a younger sister whom she hasn't seen for 10 years. Haim said that they had both risked their lives to protect her, so she was there to introduce her husband to them. Suddenly, Alabaster and the other princesses appeared, and he was there to tell them that someone else was going to train her. With that, a mage appeared flying over the grave of Haim's parents, her name is Morian. She is her younger sister and will be her new teacher. Well folks, this was the first season of Tales of Wedding Rings. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time.